Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a simple composite in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna create a simple composite, but it's also gonna be super cool using just a couple of tools in Photoshop. We're gonna show you how to combine different images together using blend modes like screen. We'll show you how to use smart objects and filters to make those images come together. And last but not least, we're gonna show you how to add coloring and grain to bring everything together. Now, don't forget, you can download these sample images on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. We got a great video. Let's jump into Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and open up our images. We've got four images uh, for this tutorial because it's compositing. So let's go ahead and hit open. It's gonna bring our images together. Uh, I'm gonna hit Control or Command minus a couple of times on each one of these images just to make it a little bit smaller. So we can see we've got a couple tents and some skies here. I've got a jellyfish, really cool image. And we've got our background here. So we're gonna start off with our jellyfish. We don't need these other layers just yet. So let's just keep it simple. We'll do one at a time. So we're gonna use my move tool, take this jellyfish, I'm gonna click and drag it from this document, boop, right over to this one. Check that out. So it's just on there now as a new layer. Let's hit F for full screen. That's just gonna hide the rest of the stuff. I don't have to worry about it. And I want to get this jellyfish looking like it's in the sky. And we're going to create a few of these. Now, the first thing that I want to do real quick here is just add a layer mask because I want this to kind of, you can see how it's just going to end really abruptly here if I don't use a layer mask. So let's go ahead and pop a layer mask on there. Now I'm going to paint black on my layer mask and that just hides a layer. So right here, that thing there that was, you know, going to be super visible. All right, I'm not worried about doing the, uh, like getting rid of the black background in this step. I'm just hiding the stuff that like, I really don't wanna see. All right, and that's a nice, a nice little blend is gonna happen there. Good deal. So that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and soften the edges of the layer. That's never a bad idea. It'll just make sure that you don't have any like hard edges where your composites kind of like, you know, coming together. Sometimes you'll see those edges and that's a dead giveaway for a composite photo. So as you can see here, see that little corner right down there? Boom, let's just paint that away. All right, so just painting black on our layer mask, that's how to hide part of your layer. Good deal. So to get this to blend in my image a little bit better, I need the black to disappear. I just want the lights to be visible. So we're gonna change our blend mode to do that. Let's change here from normal, we're gonna go down to screen blending mode. And what screen blending mode does is it makes uh, all the dark areas of your layer invisible and leaves just the light areas. So now I can go in here and do a little bit more fine tuning on these little fiber things that we got going on there. There we go. And our jellyfish is starting to look good. Not perfect just yet, but it's starting to look good. So I'm gonna flip this upside down. Let's hit Control or Command T. We're gonna right click and we're gonna to go to flip vertical. There we go. Let's do another one. Right click and go to flip horizontal there. All right, and I want kind of like a big, I want a big one. I want one big one. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be kind of the start, but we're gonna make a few of these. So for now, let's hit Control or Command J. That's just gonna make another one of these. Uh, and we're just gonna shrink it down. So let's hit Control or Command T for our transform. We're gonna shrink you on down a little bit. We're gonna right click and go to flip horizontal. And then you know what? I don't want it to look like it's the exact same thing. So I'm gonna right click again and we're gonna go to warp. And warp just kind of allows me to like change the shape of this a little bit, you know, enough to where it's like probably gonna look like slightly different here. So you can make it a little bit longer. You can make it less long. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. All righty. That looks pretty good. So we're just gonna leave that one right about there. I think it kind of looks like weird gl glowing mushrooms coming out of the sky, which I'm okay with. Let's make another copy of this original layer here. So Control or Command J on that one. I kind of like how it made it nice and bright. I'm gonna save that mentally for later. 
Alrighty. Now we're gonna make this one nice and small. So Controller Command T. This will be small. This is gonna kind of be coming, you know, up there, right? We gotta give it some depth. You know, we want some big close to the sky here, and then we want some small, you know, kind of small away. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy again. Controller Command T. And there we go. We'll make this one nice and real small here. You're gonna be up there. I might even like fade that one away a little bit. Let's rotate it around, make it even smaller. At this point, mostly I'm just like thinking about my composition here. You know, I'm not I'm not necessarily thinking about, um, you know, trying to get everything blending perfect or whatever. Uh, I can do that in a little bit. Mostly I just want, I want everything to look cohesive. All right, let's go ahead and flip that horizontally. We're gonna right click and warp this one as well. We'll just like shrink it down a little bit. Okay, so I, I want it to look like actually different from the others. There we go, and let's go ahead and just pull it, pull it on this way a little bit more. All right, good deal. So this is the step where, you know, you can kind of take your time with it. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller too. You can kind of take your time and figure out about where you want to put all these things. There we go. I want it maybe even smaller. Because this is actually just like composition, right? There we go. And I'm just hitting Controller Command T and kind of rotating these around. Nothing super crazy uh, fancy going on there. Good deal. I feel like that's actually a decent place to start all of these uh, to start my composite. Now, at this point, we're gonna notice a few things. One, the jellyfish are in front of the trees, not behind the trees. Two, you can see all the stars, uh, things like that, right behind the jellyfish. And three, if I look at these stars, you can see they have a little bit of a motion blur on them, and that's because this is a long exposure image. It's taken a night. So I wanna duplicate that long exposure, and I want everything to blend together a little bit better. So what we're gonna do to start with is I'm gonna take all my jellyfish layers. So, boop, we're gonna go ahead and shift click all of those layers. Now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to convert to smart object. Okay, so it's gonna take away any kind of blending mode that you had on those individual layers. Not a big deal, I'll just change it back again. So we'll just go from normal down to screen again. But what's not, there we go, screen. What's nice about this all being a smart object is I can treat all these jellyfish as one. But if I wanted to move them, no big deal. You could just double click right here on the layer for your smart object and you can move them around and then you can just hit controller command S to save. And in this case, I'm not going to, it would update automatically, which is super cool. So everything actually looks pretty good now. Let's go ahead and focus on getting these jellyfish behind the trees. So we're gonna make the layer invisible. We'll click on our background. I'm gonna to go to select color range. We're gonna click right here on the trees. Now in this case, we're gonna bring our fuzziness down a little bit. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Basically, I just need to make sure that the trees are selected. In this case, they're light and my background is dark. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay, which is going to basically turn all this light area into a selection. Hit okay there. Now we're gonna turn back our jellyfish, we're gonna turn them back on, and because I already have a selection active, all I have to do is click on my layer mask icon, and my selection is gonna load into the layer mask. Now it's the opposite of what we want, no big deal. Just click on your layer mask and hit Controller Command I to invert. Now I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on that layer mask, because I just wanna edit it a little bit Basically, I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and just make a selection right around here. Boop, very easy. We'll go to edit down to fill and we're gonna fill that with white. So we'll just choose white here, hit okay. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna to change our blend mode from normal to overlay and I'm gonna paint with white right over here too. And you're gonna see how, because I'm in overlay blending mode, it's gonna take these light areas and just make them even lighter but it's gonna kind of leave the dark areas alone. So I'm using this, you can see another patch here. I'm using this to kind of take care of any of those like patchy areas, but it's gonna kind of leave my tree line alone. Alrighty, just make sure you change your brush back to normal when you're done. So we have a really nice layer mask of the trees. Let's hold Alt or Option and click on that layer mask. Pretty cool, huh? 
Now, if I want to like hit this unlock button, I can unlock my layer and my layer mask. Now I can just move my layer around and check this out. Everything's going to be behind these trees. So you could even make like an animation like, woo. <laughs> there we go. That's a lot of fun. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make it look like they've got a little bit of a motion blur applied to them. So on my layer, we're going to go to filter, blur, and down to motion blur. There we go. Now I want to kind of match the angle, same kind of angle as what's going on in the stars. That was a bit of a too much of a motion blur. So we'll just add like a, maybe around 10 pixels. Let's hit okay there. Now, because it's a smart object, I can just turn this motion blur off and on at any time if I need to. There we go. But I think that just helps it kind of look more like the sky itself. Alrighty. Now we got one more cool thing that I want to do, and this is actually going to be with a duplicate of my background layer. Let's hit control or command J on the background layer. I want to kind of make these stars that are behind the jellyfish look like they're being kind of like warped. Like if you were to look through a glass of water, it kind of warps what's behind it. I want to do that with these stars. So what we're going to do is we have our background copy here. I'm going to go to filter. We're going to go down to liquify. Okay, so running a liquify filter. Now, here are my view options. I just want to make sure I show backdrop. All right. And all layers sounds good. I want this to be in front of what I'm doing. And then I can kind of like change what I've got going on here. All right. So the tool that we're going to be using is going to be the bloat tool, which just like pushes things outwards. So if I don't show backdrop, you can see if I just click here and kind of bloat it out, that's that's kind of the idea, right? We're just going to kind of push things out. Now, because we have show backdrop open, I can actually see what I'm doing a little bit more. And we're just going to kind of like push these out just to make it look like a little bit of a, you know, little bit of a graphic type effect is happening. There we go. You can't just like see straight through there. All right, we'll hit OK. So just a nice little fun effect that I think just makes it look a little bit like, you know, these are kind of warping the effect. Now it doesn't look perfect just yet, but we're going to work on that a little bit. Well, the next thing that I want to do is add a little bit more of a light effect. I want to kind of make it look like there's a galaxy inside of each one of these jellyfish. So for that, we're going to go ahead and exit out of our full screen view. And I want to bring in this image. So let's use our move tool. We're going to Click and drag from one image to another and hit F for full screen. Look at that. Already looking cool. Now, on this image, we're going to change our blend mode from normal down to screen again. And I want this to kind of be in the middle of each of these jellyfish. Looking pretty good, but the lights are just a little bit too light in this. So I'm going to hit Control or Command L for our levels. Let's make it a tiny bit dark. Cool. That just makes the general background disappear a little bit more. Now, in this case, I'm not super interested in uh, like this photo as a whole. Let's hit Control or Command T. We're just going to shrink this down just a little bit. There we go. And really, all I want is like the central Milky Way part of this photo. So let's just pop it back into normal blending mode and put it on top so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to click on my layer mask icon. All right. And we're just going to paint black on our layer mask because I, I just don't really need the whole image to be visible. I'm just kind of want this like Milky Way area here. And I definitely don't want this little tree line to be visible. So I'm going to just layer mask that out there. All right, and we'll make a soft, large brush to kind of like fade it out from there. All right, because I want this like Milky Way effect to like look like it's coming from the jellyfish. Just like move it around and make sure you don't, you know, got to look for those corners like you know, are any of my corners visible? If they are, just paint away. See, wait, look at that. Visible corners, just paint it away black on the layer mask. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Now, let's change this from a normal to a screen blend mode. I'm going to hit Control or Command T, and we're just going to start by rotating this around. There we are. And we're just going to use our Move tool to kind of like put this inside of the little jellyfish. There we go. Now, obviously, you can kind of like do any type of effect you really want here. I'm just kind of kind of here we go. Let it kind of fade in there a little bit, something like that. And you know what? Let's maybe make it a little bit larger. Cool. 
This kind of makes it look like there's, you know, like a light source coming from inside of the jellyfish. And also it just adds another fun little color in there too. Now let's just duplicate that. Controller Command T to duplicate it. We'll just make it nice and small. And we're just gonna put this in a few of the other jellyfish here. So they're each getting their own like lighting effect. It's kind of a trippy looking image here. I feel like I should do like a parental advisory. <laughs> uh, do not, ooh yeah, I like I like this little, little things in there. All right. Parental advisory. This image does no, in no way uh, endorse the use of psychedelics or anything else. <laughs> it's like natural. Here we go. Let's right click and warp that. Like I feel like, woo, right now. That's looking pretty cool. So we have all those little effects, all our little Milky Way galaxies in there. I think we're looking great. Now, I wanna give it a little bit of scale and a little bit of perspective. And we're gonna do that by adding like a tent into the foreground. Plus it's gonna give it another color, which in my opinion is just gonna help everything kind of like even out a little bit more. So let's hit Shift Command F for, uh, just sorry, Shift F to get out of full screen. And we're gonna be bringing this image in. So we'll just use our move tool and click and drag from one to another. Hit F for full screen. Alrighty, now this layer, we can do the same thing like we've been doing. We'll just change it from normal down to screen blend mode. Good deal. And I'm gonna hit controller command T. We're just gonna scale this on down. All right, not too small. Figure out about where we want it. I'm gonna go just a little bit bigger to start with. There we go. And let's hold alt or option. We're gonna click on our layer mask and that just makes an all black layer mask. Perfect, and then we can kind of paint white on our layer mask wherever we want visible. So we'll just get like a little bit of this kind of foreground in there, you know, wherever we want. All right, let's zoom out here. Looking pretty good, it's just a little bit too large right now, so I'm just gonna make this a little smaller and kind of put this in the in the foreground there. Actually, I kind of liked it that large. Maybe we'll make it even larger. All right, that's looking pretty good there. Now, the color is decent. It's a little bit on the yellow side. I want it to be a little bit more orangey. So let's just click on our layer. All right, we're gonna make another layer right above it. Let's go to a hue saturation adjustment layer. Go ahead and clip that by clicking on this layer or the, by clicking on the clipping mask icon rather. And then I'm gonna just shift my color here to a little bit more orangey. And something like that looks pretty great. Now, at this point, we're a little disorganized, so let's go ahead and group those two layers. We're gonna shift click the two of those, group them together. We'll just call this camp, alrighty. Here we have, let's go ahead and these are all of our uh, galaxy. There we go. And here we have our jellyfish. It looks fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with this composite as of yet. A uh, couple of things though, I just wanna bring the colors together a little bit more. And one of my favorite ways to do that is by using a gradient map. So let's go ahead and grab a new adjustment layer. This is gonna be on the top of everything. So gradient map on the top of everything. We're gonna click here on our gradient editor and I'm just gonna start by creating my own little gradient. So let's, the on the left is gonna be black. We're gonna start with the right side is gonna be pure white here. And what that does is just basically takes the darks in your image and maps them to the left and the lights in your image and maps them to the right. So right up here, let's make that like a yellowy color. There we go, like a bright yellow. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Over here, we're gonna shift this a little bit more towards like a teal, go a little bit darker. There we are. And let's click over here. We'll make this like a, like a dark kind of bluish. There we go, maybe a little bit lighter. All right, and that actually looks pretty good. We're gonna hit okay there. Now, obviously this is like a pretty strong effect. It's on our entire photograph. So you can see it does bring the colors together. However, it's like a little bit too much. So my suggestion would be just to lower your opacity a little bit. So let's take that opacity slider. We'll just bring it down a little bit. And this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. 
So you still get some of the coloring that brings everything together in the end, but you still get some of the original color of the image too. All right, we'll bring that opacity down a little bit more. And in this case, I'm just gonna paint over like this tent a little bit, just paint black over this layer mask. That's just gonna let some of the original color, a little bit more of that color show it, kind of show through. This looks pretty cool. Now I'm gonna take my uh, levels real quick. We're gonna go to our blue channel. There we go. Let's bring up some output levels in here. It's gonna put some blues into my shadows and you can see it here. Okay, and it's gonna do it over top of my entire image and then some yellows into my highlights. All right, not too, too much with this, but again, it's just gonna bring everything together. All righty, we're almost done. The last step is to add a little bit of grain and we do this because we have like, you know, this image and, you know, our jellies and the, basically just a bunch of different composite images. And they don't look like they were all taken like with the same camera at the same time. And by throwing just a little bit of grain over top of everything, it kind of like, like <laughs> puts it together. It's easy to do too. So we're gonna create a new layer on top of everything. Alrighty, well, let's go to edit down to fill. We're gonna fill this with 50% gray. Okay, we'll go to filter down to noise. I'm gonna go to add noise. Let's just crank it up. Nice amount of noise there. And we're gonna change our layer blend mode from normal to soft light. So come on down here to soft light. And here you can see there's our noise kind of over top of everything. There we go. And when you zoom out, it doesn't look like so harsh, but it does have the effect of just kind of like bringing everything together. You can see here in the campfire. If it's too much noise, no big, just change your opacity, lower that a little bit and you're good to go. All right. Well, there we have our fun composite image. So cool, and it really didn't take that long. Let's just go back through it one more time. So everything invisible. We started off with our jellyfish, and those are just, it's a smart object with screen blending mode, and we used a layer mask to make it look like it's behind the trees. We added a motion blur, and that's what helps it make it look like it's got the same kind of shift as the stars in the sky. It just helps it make it look more realistic. Then I wanted to make it look like the stars are kind of like warping behind the jellyfish. So we just did a duplicate of our background layer and ran a liquify effect, which just kind of warped them back there. I think it's fun. Now you lost a little bit of definition here, but no bigs because we're just gonna add our galaxies right back over top of that, which gives it a cool effect and uh, kind of makes it pretty trippy, but I'm totally into it. Then we just added our camp and we didn't do any like crazy fancy layer masking here. This was a lot of this was just done with screen blending modes, which I think is great. And we pulled everything together with a little bit of a gradient map for colors, some levels adjustments on the shadows and highlights, and then added some noise. And that really just kind of makes it look like you can see just all looks like it's one photograph. Now, of course, at this level of zoom in, it's way too much noise. But when you're further zoomed out, it looks nice. Well, there we have it. Didn't take long and we made a super fun composite in Photoshop. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna get more just like this one, hit that subscribe icon because we release free tutorials literally every single week. And if you wanna be notified, click the little ding, ding, ding bell right there on the bottom. Don't forget, you can download these exact images on flurn.com. Follow the link right down below so you can follow along with this tutorial. Talking with my hands a lot, I'm really getting in there. Thanks so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. What do you mean, talk with your hands more? I don't think I possibly could do that. Is it a way of capturing interest into whatever I'm saying? Because I'm talking about Photoshop and I got to literally do whatever I can to make it more interesting of a video for you to watch.